Hello, hello, friends. This is Grace here. Um, hoping that we're not having any camera problems because I'm getting camera alerts on my laptop. What's up with that? Hello. It's Tuesday. There'll be no late night crafting tonight because I have a meeting. I have a Zoom call that will likely go into our late night crafting time. So I decided to come live at noon today for a lunch break. So hoping you can join me. We are going to continue the Twisted Paper Studios book that I started during Junk Journal Jamboree. Um, and I'm going to first pull up the feed, make sure that everybody can see me because I don't know if you can or cannot. <laughs> That's probably a good first step. And then we'll get into it. I have, I'm using StreamYard. So that means a couple of things. You'll likely see two different camera angles. One, this one that you're seeing now, which is on my face. And then I'll have another one on the table so that you can see that one as well. Oh yes, here, I think I have this. Yay, Janet's here. Hello, Miss Janet. Um, Yay, okay, the feed is working, which is fabulous. Hello, Miss Janet. So that's one thing. There'll be two camera angles that you'll see at any given time, one of the table, one of me, which I'd really love to be able to offer you that through StreamYard. Because I'm using StreamYard, you as a, a participant would need to give StreamYard permission to post your name inside there. StreamYard program so that I can see your name like here, the lovely Janet is saying good morning and I can see her name. So hello, Janet. She's given StreamYard permission to show her name on screen. Um, so if you haven't done that, if you say hello, it may show as Facebook user, no big deal. I can still chat with you and say hello. I'm just glad that you're here. Okay, so I've got my bin in front of me. Can you see that? I got my bin in front of me and I'm pretty excited. Uh, if you don't hang out with me on the regular, welcome, welcome. I'm happy you're here. My business name is The Comfy Nest with Grace. I have um, a private membership group where I teach techniques and have created a community of like-minded women who love to create on the regular and explore other, like all kinds of ways of creating and crafting. Um, so I have a membership group. I have a shop uh, at the company nest with grace.com where I sell craft supplies, including rice paper and napkins and the glues that you need for decoupage, as well as craft supplies and surfaces and craft kits. Hey, Vicki, I see you, my friend. Kimberly's here. Hello, Kimberly. Thanks for saying hello, everybody. I appreciate you. And if you don't mind, just a little plug to hit the like button on the video um, on our time together and say hello. It helps us so much. You can't even imagine. It's one free way of supporting a creative is to comment, say hello, to like the video, to hit just hit that little thumbs up button and um, to share it if you possibly can. Do one, do all three. <laughs> it's helpful either way. So what we're going to do is I've got, I've got my bin here. I started to say, if you hang out with me a lot, you know, I use these bins. I have about 30 of them. Um, Twisted Paper Studio Kit. So if you remember, I have my notes down here. I participated the other day in the twist uh the junk journal jamboree with these fabulous ladies and we were all using the same twisted paper studios kit um for creating um different types of junk journals and books okay the one that i'm working on what i did was i printed out the kit all of the pages that i wanted and i incorporated them into the signatures of what will become my book so let me show you those so like this design is part of the kit so I combined some of the kit designs like this with some of my own stash, like that's a foam book piece of paper. This is just a double-sided sheet of piece of paper. This is a calendar from an old cal desk calendar that I didn't end up using most of it. So I tear the pages out instead of just throwing the calendar out. I tear the pages out and use them in my junk journals, just like the phone book pages. We get the phone books by mail every year we get two of them actually and i hate to just throw them out so i use them in my artwork and in my junk journal so this is a combination of some of the twisted paper studio design and some of my own stash of papers and i was i'm gonna make two signatures i thought i may change this up though girls i reserve the right to make decisions as i go because that's all i do um when i'm not teaching a scheduled class I'm working through it um, with you 
in company. Um, when I'm teaching a scheduled class, I always have the supply source ready and know exactly what's going to happen throughout the class before I teach it so that I make sure I've tested it and I make sure it's going to work for you guys. This one is a little bit of an experiment in the fact that you know, I thought I was going to do two signatures. Now they're feeling really thick and chunky, so I may break those up into four. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Let me just say quickly, um, Donna, who gave us the kit, she gifted it to the Junk Journal Jamboree members so that we could share it out there. She also gifted you, as a potential purchaser, a discount code. Um, so the discount code is good through now, through the 15th of the month. So if you want to purchase her kit or the items in her Etsy shop, I gave you guys the link um, in the description of the video with the discount code. I'm also going to share it in my Telegram channel when I'm done here so that Telegram channel users, you'll just have all that stuff right at hand. So that'll be really easy. Hi, Diane and Diana. Hello, ladies. Thanks for being here. All right, so here's my signatures. This was the source of what we're doing. So what I do in these little bins is I have them all stacked. I have them all stacked up on a shelf like behind me. Um, and whenever I want to work on a project, because I usually have multiple projects going at once, I just grab my bin and everything that I'm going to use for that project I put in the bin. So I'm going to put this back in here because we're not going to be working with these just yet. And I'm going to pull out the stuff we are going to be using. And this is the only way I can think to keep myself organized because, like I said, I have so many projects going at any given time. Okay, so here's my plan is to use this novel that I got at my local library's book sale. It's a hard cover novel. I'm going to use this novel as the cover for my junk journal and I'm going to use the cover only. So I've got to get all of these pages out. So we're going to do that together. We're going to take it apart and then we're going to put it back together in a way that makes sense for journaling. For, for being a junk journal cover. So let's just get started. Hey, Pam, I see you, my friend. Pam is here and Jenna's saying howdy. <laughs> she also fluffed the nest. That's a great way of saying Sharon. Thank you so much, Miss Jana, for doing that. I'm going to get the screen big on my table so that you can see what I'm doing. Hey, Sina, how are you, darling? What's everybody up to today? It's Tuesday. What are you doing? What do you got going on? I thought I finished all our laundry yesterday, and now we discovered a whole bunch more. So I got laundry to do. My son Gannon has the day off, and he just got back from going to the dentist and getting lab work done for his new medication that he needs to get um, situated with. So he just came home from also, he was at his Nana's house helping her with some plumbing issues and doing weed whacking for his Nana. So my good child, Gannon, is just getting home. He's going to have some lunch. There's probably an easier way to do this, girls. He's going to have some lunch, and then we are going to try to spend a little time together, Gannon and me, today. Before I have, because tonight... Um, like I said, I have this meeting tonight. Listen, I'm going to throw out this plastic cover. So I don't know why I'm being so careful and precious about it. It's going to get thrown out. I don't have a use for it. I mean, can you imagine that? Right now, anyway, I don't. I should really think on that and challenge myself to find a way. But I can cut through that just to... I'm trying to cut this really incredibly sharp um, or strong tape that the library uses without cutting the cover of the book. So this is probably the easiest way to do it is from the inside out instead of the other way around. But then I should figure a way, shouldn't I? Junk journal, junk journal uh, lover, junk journal activist. <laughs> the way that we do things is find uses for things that would get thrown out otherwise. I'm going to have to think on this one, girls. In the meantime, it's getting set aside. <laughs> what I want is this. Okay, I want this gorgeous. Look at it's in beautiful, beautiful shape. This cover. It has a little drink with with like a palm. Is that a drink? I don't know what that is. It's a foiled image. It looks like a cup with like a, a palm tree umbrella. Like I was gonna say an umbrella in it, like one of those umbrella drinks. But that's an elephant. I have no idea what that is. Maybe it's supposed to be a window. 
if it is, it's really small. Anyway, the cover is gorge. I don't want this tape on here. So what I generally do to get the tape off is heat it up, get that glue on there, heat it up pretty well. I'm careful with my fingers not to put it on the tape immediately. But generally when you, when you heat up these tapes, they'll come sliding right off once you've heated up that glue a little bit. And see this tape has filaments through it, like fibers going through it that gives it that strength. Can you see how it's kind of striped? So it's really strong tape, which works great for the book holding that cover on, but it's kind of tough to get off. So I like to give you my tips and tricks. Jana's making faces on painted pistachio shells. Jana, that has got to be the tiniest little paintbrush you're using. <laughs> we would love to see because pistachio shells are so ti teeny tiny. Can you please take a picture of what that's all about and share it in the Crafty Chicks Club? We want to see. Oh, I know. Cena says the laundry's never done. Mm -mm, not when you have two teenagers at home. I fear a little bit the end of this week. Right now it's Gannon and me at home. Chris is off um, out of town for work and packed a bag. And Landon is off at a, um, a wrestling camp for the week. And he packed a bag both bedding and clothing, workout clothing, as you can imagine, he's going to come home with lots of dirty laundry, as is the other person. <laughs> so I want to be totally caught up before they get home so that I'm not overwhelmed at the end of the week, if you know what I mean. Oh, let me get my face in here so that you can see me too. We might as well. We're not doing anything very intricate just yet. All right. You see how clean that comes off? It doesn't even leave any there's no glue here it's a little bit tacky right there but that's not oh and look this left behind some of those little strings we better pull those off let me work on that now this the cover is very very plain back very plain on the front except for that foil i'm going to i've never done this before this way so um bear with me as I work through it and figure it out. But I think I'm going to, I'm going to right now, my intention is to leave the outside cover plain and just work on the inside so that I can prepare the inside for sewing in the signatures. Hello, Miss Molly. How are you? What you up to today? Pam says I'm supposed to be cleaning my closet. <laughs> you can clean and watch at the same time, right? What? We're, we're all good with that, Pam. Hey, Kim. How are you, Kimberly Holloway? You guys, why? They're, okay, let me just check something really quick. I'm going to check Facebook, and I'm checking StreamYard, and they're both telling me I have three people online, which Molly is here, Jana is here, Cena is here, Pam is here. You've all said hello. Kimberly is here. Jana, did I say your name already? Diana, Diana. That's eight people. Why is it showing three? Whack a doodle. Like, why is that so whacked out? What is with it? With it's so hard to figure out these things sometimes. Like, why doesn't it just do what it's supposed to do? The technology. All right, that is a little bit tacky right there. I'm just not going to worry about it right now. I don't know what I'm going to do with the outside cover of this book. I usually decorate the outside of my books last. So let's just turn our attention to the inside. We got to take all of this out. And if I start pulling on this, you can see that this has already detached itself, the glue. And here, I don't know what's in here. I don't think that it's attached. I think it's glued down, but not very well. It's not like sewn in, okay? So it's like a floating binding in there, which is actually what I'm going to do too um, with my pages, but we got to cut this out and I'm debating. So see how this is already coming out. This page is attached to this page that's glued down. So I'm tempted to just try to carefully, yeah, look at, I've already detached this. from the center. So let's see if we can do that same thing on this side. Because I was thinking if I could salvage this white piece of paper 
on there. It wouldn't look so bad <laughs> until I can get it covered up. But let's just see. Okay. Uh oh, I don't want to. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if I tear this page out with it. These seem to be. These two seem to be glued together. I want it. I want it to come apart where it's naturally put together. There we go. Oh, I know. This is like I know for some people who are watching this. Just tell me. I'm totally good with this conversation because I find it fascinating and I respect you a lot. Does this bug you? <laughs> I'm taking a book apart. There are people out there who this is, and, and I used to be one of them, that it used to just break my heart um, to see books like this torn apart. But then I have also witnessed, because I bring our recycling to our recycling center, I have also seen a dumpster full of library books. Not from this library. It was from a local school library. Not local even. It was like actually a rural school library. Anyway, I have seen a dumpster full of books, which breaks my heart even more. I would much rather take a book apart and reuse all of its parts than to just toss it in the garbage. That's like, oh, no. Okay, this one's not, it's not coming apart quite as nice. It's just not. I'm going to tear on this and try I want this to be this line here to be as clean as possible and it's not working out so we're gonna we're gonna help it along we're gonna give it a slight can you hear it slight cut so that we can try to dislodge this without it looking really messy that's the goal here we go that cut really helped. See that? Okay. So you can see they, they put like a webbing, like a taped webbing. Can you see that grid line there? They put that behind here to really hold everything together. And I need to cut through that. I think that that's what's holding this all in place. So along that same line, now I do not want to cut the book cover. I just want to cut the stuff that's floating in between. So I'm going to really gently, it's easier for me to do this standing up. So I hope you can still see that. I only have two camera angles here, girls. I'm doing my best. You have to very carefully do this so that you don't rip this part, which is your actual book cover. I don't want to tear that. So I don't have to do it all from one angle. You can keep flipping your book back and forth until you can get down to that part of it. It's coming. Now I can see it better. I can see it all. Here we go. See that? I don't mind if this rips, the binding of that. I just don't want the book cover to rip. I want to detach them from each other. More tools needed. Maybe I could use something like this instead of my finger, you know, to get in there and try to rip that part off. That works. There's another piece of paper that's attached to the binding here. There's a piece of paper attached to this. That's what you're seeing rip right here. That's not the cover. That's the, the paper attached to this. And that's what they use to glue everything together. I got that side done. Now let's come around. This one shouldn't be as hard because we've already got this detached. Yeah, so does this, any any part of you get a little cringy when you see this book being taken apart? It's okay to take it apart because you are going to make it new again. That's how I feel too. Like I would never in a million years um, just tear books apart for the sake of tearing them apart. I only do this to books that have been basically slated for the garbage that's what the local library does i think they're just they have a lot of donations and they have a lot of books that they've taken out of circulation so when you go to a yard sale or an estate sale or something like that i actually i cannot bring myself to do this to really old books from like the early 1900s and before that 
it really bugs me, even if they're really old and decrepit. But newer books that are a dime a dozen, kind of, as they say, I don't, I don't mind doing it. First. Okay, so now all of this can be used. <laughs> you could still read the book if you wanted to, but it can all be used for um, making all kinds of mixed media and paper projects and even book pages for upcoming junk journals. But I'm not going to use that. I don't need that right now. So I'm going to set that aside and then we're going to look at the anatomy and what we got left. Okay. So on this side, this was the front. Yep. There's a little pocket card. And I was trying to get these to come off together so I could try to give this a nice clean cut. And then on this side, I ended up doing it all at once. So let's cut this off and I will definitely use that library pocket for something. Um, but let's... Do I want to approach it from this side or this side? Maybe here. I'm just going to put a really tiny, ah, it's not very straight. <laughs> it may be tiny, but it's not very straight. My, my, my hand is moving all over the place. So I'm going to stick this on here, get back to that spot and use this as my guide for my knife. So at least the line is all in the same place. And then let's, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this ruler. To hold it down so I can tear this as straight and neat as possible. I missed about a quarter inch section down here. You guys, I put on this huge, I don't know if you've seen a ring light before. I put on this huge ring light. It's right here in front of me. It heats up this room so bad I can hardly take it. I might have to go get my fan. Okay, see what we have left. And what's interesting is actually this piece right here is much thinner. It's not board. It's just paper. Where here, they've inserted a board on both sides. This is really flimsy. I was thinking this was going to be board too, and it's not. So, as Landon used to say when he was a little, little boy, think, think, think. How are we going to do this? i got to get rid of all this. See, I want to... Actually, the, all of this messiness right here, all this little webbing, it will eventually get covered with something. So, I'm not even going to worry about the messiness there. If I was going to keep this, which was my plan... I would want to clean it up. Like I can't glue something to all these loose bits. So all these loose bits got to go. These were once, these papers were once attached to this. Like they got to go. You got to go. So I'm going to tear it apart for a few minutes while we chit chat. I know, Cena, me too. Hurts my heart to see books in a dumpster. Um, Oh, Kimberly, really good point I didn't think of. I love what you just said. Hold on, I'm going to highlight that on the on the screen. Um, where, where, let me find that comment. I love what you just said or said a minute ago. Um, Dawn leaves pages in her books and then to cover them or to add to them. Hey, Missy, I see you. Well, that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Kimberly. Um, if the library is getting a little money for it and it's now being repurposed with Second Life, I think it's all is good, right? So yeah, if they're repurposing their collection and taking out the things that, you know, no one has in, been interested in 20 years of, in this stuff, or maybe they got new versions of those books that are in better shape, um, why not, like, find a good home for them and then re- give them new life right that's kind of how i feel like what i'm doing and at the same time it's benefiting whatever the estate sale the library the local school that's selling the books whoever it might be yard sale owner the yard sale person this is all paper you guys i am actually surprised you can see it here there's actually another like folded cover right here but this is all can't get in there that thing is too thick you know that? that's all paper so i have to decide will i be able to create a like structurally sound 
cover out of this for my journal with that on the outside. I think the way to do that um, is to reinforce. I think I can keep it, but I better as all heck reinforce it, right? Yeah, Molly says, watch those fingers, girls. I just took the Band-Aid off this morning. Oh, this was the thumb, I think. Yeah, that I cut yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> Kimberly says, I feel like a nervous mom. Please do not cut yourself again. I actually... Oh, where did I put them? I brought Band-Aids in here. Um, I brought Band-Aids back here somewhere. I got to find them and have them really handy because I do tend to cut myself when you're paper crafting. Hello, Miss Ann. Hope all is going well. It's okay, Debbie. All right, Debbie, you can always catch the replay. Always, always catch the replay. All right, anyway, this, I got to get my fan, girls. Look, if I shut this light off, I'll give you, like, the why we have the ring light. Shut the front door. Look at the difference. We need the ring light, but it melt makes me melt. <laughs> it melts this girl. So hold on, let me get my little fan. Hopefully it has enough battery life. I got my little cordless fan here. Oh yeah, let's turn that bad boy on and put it somewhere. Whoo, that's better. I'm gonna put it right in front of me. Yeah. Oh, now my hair's blowing. That's the that's the softest it goes. So we're gonna have to just looks like it looks funky, but we're gonna have to live with it because I can't, can't function with all the heat. Um yeah, Diana, I'm not gonna use cardboard. Let's talk about that. I'm gonna use something different. Cardboard, I think, is gonna be too thick and too brittle for that. So a piece of fabric would be a in my opinion, a better choice for this. Or I was recently watching um, a woman named Sharon Horth on um, on um, YouTube, and she was making her own books. I was watching her, and she uses like the Tyvek envelopes that you get, like it from the U the United States Postal Service. But this is that same material. Cheryl, I opened this Happy Mail yesterday. Cheryl sent me Happy Mail, and it's this same material that this is made out of like it's I she called it Tyvek I would consider it the same it's like Tyvek tape the material so it feels somewhat plastic somewhat paper I don't know technically how it's engineered or made but it's incredibly durable right so I'm going to use a chunk of this on here and I'm going to use fabric on the other part of the binding. So I need this, but I don't want it to be, um, I wanna you know, hide the addresses here for a second. I need a piece as tall as my book binding, right? So I think I'm gonna go eight and a half inches by, I'm gonna extend it beyond to keep it really strong. So let's do an eight and a half by three inch piece. And we're gonna glue it down to this as a way of tape. Okay, you can also buy, this is two inch tape maybe, two inch. I would need a three inch roll of tape or doubling this two inch tape. This would also help, but honestly, this has the more plastic feel, so I think it's stronger. So we're gonna use, we're gonna use maybe both of them because I really wanna make sure that this is strong. What did I say, eight and a half by three? So I got to cover addresses because I don't want Cheryl's address out there in the world. So let me do that. We're going to cut. Here's the opening of this. So I'm going to make one cut just to get a straight line here. Like that. Now I got a really straight line. I'm going to cut a three inch piece of this. Sorry, itchy eye itchy eyeballs. Um, there's something in the air this year more than years past, like really bad. That is making my eyes itch. Isn't that strange how one year you're fine and then the next year the pollen or whatever it is that's out in the world there that's floating around the air really bugs you. Okay, this is three inches. So there's my three inch chunk. Doesn't really matter what it looks like because it's going to get covered. So this has that flap that you, you tear the tape off of and fold over. So I'm not gonna use that. 
I'm going to use this side, but I need it to be eight inches long. Did I say eight or eight and a half? Oh my Lord, my eye, my eyeball. What did I say? Eight or eight and a half. Um, Janet says that deconstructing books helps me de-stress and then create. It can be so relaxing and it, it's rewarding because it feels good to take an otherwise throw away and make something pretty out of it. Um, Vicki says, managing inventory in a library is so hard. And then if you have bad weather on your sale day, there's no place to put the books, but in a dumpster, as hard as that is to type, repurpose is awesome. Yeah, Vicki. Yeah, Vicki. I, I did no judgment there. I mean, I think everybody would totally agree with you. You know, if you're doing a yard sale and all your books get soaked with rain, I mean, what recourse do you have? As sad as that may be. So when we can salvage books and reuse them, we're all, I think we're all better off. All right. That's eight and a half. That's eight and a half. Did I say eight and a half? I think I did. I could always cut it down further if needed. All right. So hopefully this is eight and a half by three inches, which is, you know, kind of the roundabout measurement I came up with for covering this with something that's going to protect it. This isn't about beauty, <laughs> as you can see, because it looks funky, right? Actually, this paper is really cute. It's really cute. There's nothing wrong with it. The book is going to have a vintage thought vibe, though, you know, because of the Twisted um, Paper Studio um, downloadable digital kit was like a like a, a vibe that was very like Victorian, actually. I'm going to cut a little more of this, maybe like a half inch more off because I don't want it quite so high or tall. Yeah, that's really good. Because sometimes when you create your book, right? <laughs> I'm always the like the curious person who I want to I do this almost with every book that I touch. Where I look at the binding. I want to look at the binding and see how is it attached because this is my life, right? And I want to look down in there. <laughs> I want to look down in there. And the bigger the book, the bigger the gap will be. And so I don't really want this to be seen. In fact, I could do it this way, as cute as that may be, so that you're not seeing that. And we're going to glue this down. So what kind of glue to use? I want it to be really securely in place. Um, so I think I'm going to use PVA glue. Neutral, pH adhesive. It's specifically for book binding. I haven't used it in a while, so let me give it a good shake. And I'm going to... Spread it out here. I don't think I need this right now, so I'm going to move that out of here. I'm going to put it on top of my garbage can and hope that it doesn't crash boom bang, but it may. All right, we're going to glue this down with some of this neutral adhesive. When you're coming in, if you're just coming in, please say hello. Um, everybody's at lunch because there's 13 of you here, which is fantastic. I'm thrilled for every single one of you that are here hanging out with me. Um, it's, I try to do, even in the membership group, I tell the girls, I try to do live demonstrations and workshops at a variety of times throughout the day Bec and um, not because I want to be able to reach as many people as possible. And if I only ever go live the same exact day of the week and the same exact time every time, there's probably a huge population of people who won't make it because they're working or their schedule just isn't going to allow them to be there at that time. Okay, this always happens to this glue bottle. Oh, that doesn't fit in there. <laughs> Where it gets kind of gunked up in there. So I, I inevitably have to dig out what's in there. Oh, why are you in here? Pencils don't belong in here. I'm looking for something that I can dig without ruining the thing. Oh, palette knife. I'm gonna just see if there's any like, like the booger things, like these hard crusty things gotta come out because they're not working as glue anymore. They're just clumps of glue. In fact, that was like really hard. So we gotta get this stuff out of here. I will say this, I love this glue, but every time I use it, which I will admit, I don't use it like, I'm not using it daily, but every time I use it, I have to clear out I'm going to use the pin for my other glue to see if I can clear this out. Yeah, there's hard glue right there that kind of got stuck. 
and then it doesn't flow out. And I want to be able to use, ew, I don't want to put my fingers in there. <laughs> ew, listen to me. My fingers are so dry from all the glues and stuff that I use. So I'd much rather go in there with a little surgeon. And now look, we got a nice hole there to, to get our glue to ooze out of. Yeah, this bottle, for some reason, this always gets glumped up. <laughs> we had to do a little fixing. Hi, Maureen Peterson. How are you, my friend? What's happening in your world? Okay, we're going to go generous. Generous glue. And I need to spread it out far enough to cover all three inches. So... I just did that. And then I just got these from Amazon. I have a wider one. I think it came with two, this one and a wider one. This was the one I was really after. But of course, getting the two of them was like a better deal than buying just the one. So I thought, well, I'll have a wide one and a skinny one. I would have loved to have gotten two skinny ones because I, the kinds of projects I do, I don't generally need a big wide one. But we're going to extend this out enough so that we get the end of our Tyvek paper, I'm gonna call it. And I wonder if I shouldn't glue that thing down. That's just like kind of loose. Oh, this one's not loose. This one must've come unstuck. It was probably glued down at one point and is no longer. All right. We, we are reinforcing is the goal here. <laughs> Don't get that off frugal fanny that I am. We're going to try to use as much of it as possible. Oh, I did it on the wrong side. It's okay. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to go back on my choice to go with the white on this side. And I'm trying to equally distribute. I'm not measuring. I eyeball, but you can see it's about a third of an inch maybe on either side. And now that I've got a little bit of glue on there, I think what I'll do, so I don't get glue on my hands, is just push this down with a paper towel. And I want to really get in the grooves here so I can maintain the little divots that are right here between the board and the paper. There's like a drop off right here, a little shelf. This is going to get covered again with something else. So I don't need it to be perfection, but we want, this is our, like our reinforcement layer. Doesn't need to be perfection. I'm going to cover this with fabric, I believe. Kind of got a bunch of fabric right there that I had in mind that I think would be prettier. I'm adding a little more on these edges where you can see I missed. Imagine that, girls. I really like using like either my fingers or something under my fingers, like some people use like saran wrap or something to push down on these things that we're gluing just to make sure that it's really getting down there. I can see this whole section is loose. So I probably just did not extend that glue, whoops, far enough right here. Come on, glue, be my friend, right there. All right. This is just going to be our reinforcement to really hold this strong. Okay, while this is drying a bit, there's going to be a second layer. There probably doesn't need to be. I was originally, when I thought that this piece, this one inch piece was bored, I was just going to cover it with a piece of decorative fabric to reinforce and... Um, to make it a little stronger and to be more decorative. However, it's not bored. So I felt like I needed to use this Tyvek type paper to hold it down, just to explain to you everything that I'm doing. I could come in with just tape. It would be like, I guess, a double layer of taping. This tape is specifically for crafting and bookmaking. I could do this. That'll really make sure we're holding down. And this is kind of transparent, which is nice. It doesn't, it's, you can see it's not changing the color of the book. I'll, sh I'll hold it up and show you. Yeah, that, that would be a nice reinforcement yet again. You see it's more the color of this, this piece of tape, than the, the back of the Tyvek is more white. So that actually blends really well. 
And I like that it's nice and wide. Let's do that. Let's just really play devil's advocate here and do some more layers of protection. So Gannon, you guys want to hear something funny? Gannon talked to his friend this morning. He wanted to invite his friend yesterday over to hang out. Just, you know, something to do. Oh, we went a little low on this one. Um, so he called his friend and said, you know, what are you up to? Are you working today? Want to hang out? Want to do something? And the kid said, you know, I'm working today, but maybe tomorrow. Well, then by the time that, so that was yesterday. By the time Gannon got his plan today together for today, Kellen called him late last night and said, all right, what's the plan? You want to get together tomorrow? I do have to work, but I should be done around noon. We can do something in the afternoon. Gannon was like, no, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know, he says. All right, look, we're already getting stronger. I can just feel, it feels better when I fold it. It just feels so much better. And that's not too bad looking. You could always, like I said, cover that with, um, my original intent was to take a decorative or plain, it can be plain too, piece of fabric and cover it with that. But now for reinforcement's sake, I don't need to do that. I will end up probably covering this with either paper or fabric in the end. So I'm gonna leave that fabric off for now and consider this strong enough to do what we're gonna do. I want one more little piece of tape, where are you? So Gannon, yesterday we got a call from, we had to cancel his dental appointment because of his other doctor's appointment. He had a cleaning skit set up. He's getting it braces on this week. So he has to go get a cleaning. He's already late for a cleaning, so he should really get a good cleaning before he gets his braces on. So when I told them, you know, he's already late getting his cleaning done, like we're off schedule and he's getting braces on. They were like, oh, when we get, they were great about it. When we get a, an opening, you know, someone cancels, we'll call you and let you know. Well, yesterday afternoon, they called me and said, hey, we had a cancellation for tomorrow at nine. Can Gannon go? I'm like, yep. He, can. he wasn't working. So I said, yep, he can go. So then he had, oh, and then Mayo called and said he needed to go in for lab work. So we can get him set up for this medicine lab work as soon as possible. And you know, you don't need a schedule for that. You just go in. So I said, you got to go to the dentist in the morning and then you got to go to the lab and get your blood work done. And then Nana had come over and said, I need help with my plumbing and weed whacking. So to, go to, Nana's to do that. Plus he had to pick up his paycheck from his old job, bring it to the bank with the other paychecks that he hadn't cashed yet and get all of those cash. So for a 16 year old, he had to go get gas. He had quite a few little chores on his list. So he was lamenting to his friend, Kellen, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do. I got so many chores tomorrow. I'm like, Gannon, really, it's not going to take you that long, kid. But he was a little overwhelmed. Like, Gannon, you've got this. So now he's in the in the kitchen eating, and eating his, his pizza and happy. <laughs> You're welcome, Anne, for sharing. You're welcome. Yeah, the poly mailer. So save your mailers. These things actually are, are a bit of a bit pricey. Like, I don't know. When I go, I don't want to show addresses, but... When I go to the post office anyway, and they have these poly mailers, they don't have a bubble element to them. And they're, no, they're not poly mailers because they're not plastic. I don't know what they're called, girls. But if I turn it inside out, it's that, it's really thin like paper, but it has a more plastic, like tear proof vibe to it. Save them if you get them in the mail with anything because they're gonna be great reinforcers without having to buy, Tyvek is expensive. And who needs like a 300 yard roll of Tyvek, which is what they sell at like Home Depot and stuff. I mean, it's not 300 yards, but like really long lengths. We don't need that much Tyvek in our life. Um, so save your things, girls. Maureen is doing heavy cleaning today. Get it, girl, get it. <laughs> All right, this I think is in good shape. I think this is ready to become the cover to our book. Now let's talk about, let's talk about my signatures. First, I need to get a little sip of water. And then we're gonna look at these signatures because I think my signatures, I think two signatures is not gonna be helpful to me. I think I need to do four. Maybe four doubling. Where's my book? Where's my box? Oh, hold on, I gotta roll over here. I'll be back, you can hear me rolling across to the uh, table right here. Okay, here I am. Grabbed it from a little bin. Here are my signatures that I honestly feel like I just feel like, well, they're gonna fill the space nicely. Let me remove that comment so you can see. You can see what I'm doing. They're gonna fill the book nicely, particularly when I start decorating these pages. I just think two things. 
one for handling the pages, the, the, the groupings. So remember this grouping of papers, each one of these is one signature. That's the title for us. So this is a signature, this is a signature. When I'm sewing these into my base for this, um, these are pretty heavy and thick. I think they're gonna be difficult to handle. I think if I split them up into four, I still will be able to fit it into the book, but it won't be so difficult to sew into the book. So can my, it'll be easier to see from here, can this length of space handle four signatures? It's one inch. All right, let's do three. I'm more comfortable doing three because it's how close they are together. So three signatures with fewer pages rather than two signatures with all those pages. So let's go with three. In actuality, do you see where the natural edge of this book binding is? Is right here, like between my two fingers. That was to accommodate this. That's why it was there. It was to accommodate and fit this perfectly. But in reality, the board extends. Here's where the board starts, right where my thumbnail is. Maybe I should use something like this to show. Something colorful and easy to see. That's where the board begins. So we actually have another third of an inch right there that is not book board that could become surface for the binding. <laughs> it could be because the natural end with that pinch point of this book signatures there are more than one signature there, but that, that set of signatures, that natural end doesn't have to be right there because we're not using these pages anymore. It can be wherever we deem it to be. Um, and this is actually a little, no, it's an inch, it's an inch wide. So if I did three in an inch, that means every third of an inch, I would have a sewn, like I would have to be able to fit that in there. Okay. So I am going to create, I've never done this before. <laughs> so this will be fun. A floating binding. So what that means is we're going to take something like this. And this is going to get glued down here. Just, it's going to only get glued where I put my ruler. It's going to get glued here and it's going to get glued here, which means that this center section is going to be floating. It's not going to be glued or sewn down. I'm going to sew my signatures to this. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it's going to be a floating signature. I've never done this before, but it's what I want to do. So I want it to be, I want it to cover this. So I'm gonna make it four and a half inches wide, this piece of fabric, by eight and a half inches tall. Is that what we did, eight and a half? Well, really, eight is even better. Let's do four and a half by eight. It can be whatever you want. I grabbed different fabrics because you could I mean, this, this part is going to show unless you really work hard at covering it up. This is really thick, nice duck cloth kind of fabric. It's just far too bright for this book. Like these are much thinner fabrics, but they match better. I had attempted to use this one because it has a little bit of a design element. These are just scraps of fabric I have on hand. I didn't go buy fabric for this. I mean, you could go super plain with this or we could be a little decorative. I'm gonna go with a little decorative. Why not? Let's get crazy. Let's get a little bit creative here and we'll use the, the decorative piece. It's thin though, so we're gonna to have to reinforce again. 
we got this. It's a process, but it's all very reasonable and easy to do. So we need this to be eight inches by four and a half inches. Okay, that's what I need. I have a much bigger piece than that. I don't think I can cut this in my, I wish I could in my paper cutter. I'm gonna have to use this bad boy. So let's push everything aside because I'm gonna need my cutting board. I'm going to go on eight inches by four and a half. So let's cut a four and a half, half inch strip and then we'll cut that down. So because my little cutting board is smaller than what I need, I'm just going to fold this in half, line up these edges, and cut my four and a half inch strip out of this. Okay. I'm actually going to face it this direction. We're going to do the best we can to be straight here and then I'm going to get one of my quilt rulers that can see through that we can see through and it needs to be four and a half inches wide here's four and a half right here so I'm going to line up you see that four and a half I'm going to line up that line with this edge to make sure I get a four and a half wide inch strip and then we'll cut that down to eight so my four and a half is this one like this. Concentrating. <laughs> I'm going to need a rotary cutter, which I got to find. I have this one, which I think is somewhat dull in one section. So it like cuts and then doesn't cut. So we might have to do a couple of, it doesn't feel like it's cutting at all, to be honest with you. <laughs> Pull out the big gun. I shouldn't say that word on Facebook. Or you can hear that it's cutting. But I need new blades everywhere, you guys. I really do. I pulled on it, so now I gotta re-establish my line. I apply a lot of pressure to try to get cut through here. Because my blades are so dull. There we go. There's my four and a half inch strip. You have this fabric? And this same exact one, I've had it for a long, long time. Now, I need eight inches, and without harming my washi tape that I used for the bindings, that I'll use some other time. Um, so I'm going to go this way eight inches so that I don't cut onto that. So I'm going to line the fabric up with one of the straight edges on the, the ruler on the board. That will give me a nice straight edge. This is all curled up, so I can't really use this edge as a good marking point for <laughs> lining up my eight inches, but I can, I can count the inches here. It's lined up here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be eight inches if I put my ruler on this line here. Oh, this was the stuff that I found so difficult. I'm going to try not to cut my washi tape when with quilting when I was a quilter, when I was quilting, beginner quilting, um, the preciseness of it. It stressed me out to no end. <laughs> That's why I don't really quilt anymore, number one. Um, and number two, it's why I eyeball so many things because the stress of being completely accurate numbers it just it stresses me out too much okay this should be enough to cover the tape and be this is what we're going to sew the signatures in if you can imagine I've never done this before but we're going to do it we're doing it girls we're doing it now again I need this to be stronger than that <laughs> so maybe we should use another piece of Tyvek on the back of it we could use the tape, but I have a feeling that we're going to be better off if we use that, this piece of Tyvek. The, the thing with this is it has this extra strip. Let's see if we can just pull it off. Oh, yeah. I just don't want that to interfere with anything. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to use this piece. doesn't matter what it looks like. It's all going to get hidden just need to get it glued down to the back. It just needs to be small, you know, smaller than this piece. And so I can glue it here. And that's what we're going to end up sewing our signatures into. I have never done this before, but I watched that other woman 
on um, YouTube and was inspired to do a floating one. So that's what we're doing. I'm just going to cut it just shorter. Doesn't matter if it's super straight. Okay, let me just throw that little piece out. I don't think, I think I'll lose track of it before I ever use it. Okay, this is going to get glued down right here. Okay. Whew, I need water. You had that, that um, fabric for almost 10 years. I probably have had this for 10 years too. Oh, new blades on a rotary cutter first. Number one, be careful because you're not used to the sharpness. <laughs> Number two, yay, because it's going to work so much better for you. Okay, I got. I just got to make some room here. I'm, I'm adjusting some things. Okay, I have my Fabri-Tac Fabri-Fix here in this bottle. So let's see if I can get this to come out. I've been having trouble with it being too thick lately. Um, and so I added some acetate to it yesterday and tried to work that into the glue and see if I could get it to, <laughs> come on, I know you want to. Why, why do I always have trouble with glues? All right, that is loose. So that is not, there's nothing jammed in there. It's just that the glue is so thick, it doesn't want to come out. So who else uses Fabrifix Fabri-Tac? And do you add the acetate to yours to get it to thin up? Do you see how it hardly moves in the bottle? I added a good amount of acetate yesterday, you guys. And I had added a good amount of acetate a week before that, but do you see what happens here? Do you see how it gets like stringy and goopy? We don't want stringy and goopy. We want it to flow. We need you to flow, my friend. No strings allowed. <laughs> no strings attached. All right, let's just see what's going on down in here. You know, it's like there, but it's like a gel. I'm not going to waste it though. <laughs> you know me. Why are you like a gel? Why are you not like a fluid? I really love this glue for its versatility and how strong it is. I love all that about it, but I will tell you, I have been, it's been nothing but struggle to get the darn stuff to come out of the jar. All right, let's do a little acid while we're, might as well do it while we're live. All right, let's. Make sure this hole isn't, see how it's all like a string? We don't want string. We want it to like flow. We need you to flow, my friend. But it's, 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 it has enough viscosity that I can spread it with my knife. I want it to have more viscosity so that I can just squeeze it out of the jar. So this is the way you make it do that. <gasps> Can someone say find a funnel? Oh, I went in my cut. Oh, gee, mama, that's that burns. That 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 stings a little, friends. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, jeez, jeez, Louise. Good thing, it, like it immediately evaporated on my hands and on my table. It's in my book a little bit, but eh, I don't think I'm worried about that. We got plenty in there. You can see how liquidy it is. Got plenty in there, which was the goal. Oh, wait, I need the little capper. Wow, that was, that was, that stung in my poor little thumb. Usually I put the little silicone thing on top and then shake it around, but I'm not going to, I'm going to just use my thumb. Let's just see if there's anything stuck in here. Nope. I'm just going to use my finger, I mean. We got to get that really thin acetate to work through this glue. Oh, Anne says I'm taking it all in because I'm learning so much. See how thick it is? What is it thick like? Can you think of another substance that is this thick? This is so incredibly. It's a good thing it's a clear jar because you can easily see how slow moving it is. We don't want slow moving glue. Not this slow. And I put a bunch of acetate in here yesterday and I thought it was going to be enough. I tested it even and it was enough, but it just seems like I have to add the dang acetate every day. I'm not seeing any comments about the Fabrifix. Maybe it would help you guys to see the actual 
store bottle. This is what I'm, this is what I'm struggling with. Dip de doo. <laughs> Janet. Dip de doo. I think I'm going to put more in. Glutton for punishment. I can't get this other big white cover off. It's like glued down. This one always comes off easily. All right, let's do this again. There is a ton of glue on here and it's like in the fan. So I'm going to move it over just for now because I'll add more to that in a minute. I don't think it's going to dry that quickly. Oh, it's kind of thick right here. Like it's not even releasing from right there. Um, almost every paper crafter, junk journaler, bookmaker that I follow uses Fabrifix or Fabri-Tac for their projects. I'm going to move my book cover out of here too so that we don't get another big splash. Because I, I think what happened when I poured it is it was so gumped up in there that it overflowed. Now, I think I've got that cleared out enough. Yep, that I can just pour. I'm going to put a lot in, girls. It feels like a lot anyway. Ugh, it does stink. I'll give you that much. You're you're still there painting eyes. Good, Jana. I'm glad you're here. That stuff, I can feel it already. My hand is drying out already. Like I need any help with that. All right. That is on. I'm just gonna give this a wipe so I don't get any more acetate on my fingers. And then you can see the thin liquid on top. We're gonna try to get that incorporated into the thick mass of glue on the bottom. Oh, good gravy. Does anybody have tips for me on this? Because I have done this multiple times and yet it's still, I'm like almost ready to just go buy another bottle. I love the glue that much, but just this dang bottle for some reason, it just will not stay thin enough to come out of the container. See how it moves is one big glob, <laughs> looks like slime. One big glob of slime moving through there. We need it to be just flowy. Um, because this bottle, the original bottle that it comes in, first of all, the whole top broke almost immediately when I got it. This just, the plastic on plat, like it's a silicone glue, I think. And when it dries on here, it's nearly impossible to get off. So I wanted... I wanted to have the metal tip bottle because it's like putting glue on silicone. It comes right off. If, if you need to clean a, a metal tool off, it's a lot easier to clean than um, a plastic. So this tip just doesn't work great. Plus the bottle's much bigger. So when you're waiting for that amount of glue to come to the bottom of the bottle to pour out, it just takes longer because it's a much bigger bottle. So I wanted the smaller bottle of glue and I wanted the metal tip. So I changed the bottle. So it doesn't sound like anybody who's here has had experience with this Fabri-Tac and adding acetone to it to get it to thin out. But if somebody's catching the replay, yeah, it was stored upside down, Janet. I had it stored like this in my glue box. Um, it's just so thick it won't even come through the tip. Abbott. So if someone's if someone's catching a live, please say hello. Make sure you, you do check in with me. Let me know that you're here so I can say hello back and get to know you. Um, would love to know if you have any experience with this glue bottle thing and getting this Fabrifix or Fabri-Tac to loosen up. How do we get this bad boy to loosen up? All right. Now I just need to make sure I don't need to work this forever in a day. I just need to make sure that it's like when I get glue out of here, it's not coming out as acetate that it's a mixture because there's acetate in the glue. So you don't put water in here. It'll just, it will, will never mix with the glue, but the acetate will. So you, you use acetate to try to thin it out instead of water, like a water-based glue, you could use water in, but not this one. Okay, let's test it. Let me get, I'm gonna get actually that little piece of Tyvek I just threw out. To, t to see what comes out of the tip, if it's really super thin or if it's just not gonna come out before I go in on my project again. See, it won't even come out. What is your main issue I want to know? That's what I want to know. 
Well, let's just do that for now. It's stuck to my finger. I got glue everywhere, girls. All right, here it comes. Ah, there, I had to bust through. Now, you see how liquid that was coming out? That's what we want. Okay, we're back in business, friends. Here is my part that we're gonna glue to. Here is the part that we're gluing down, and that's what you want. You want it to flow so that you can quickly get your glue on here. It worked. So we're gonna put this on here. Just I'm eyeballing it in the center, and right here I have this crease, so I'm gonna pull on that to make sure I get it nice and straight. Now let me get something flat. So I can really attach that nicely. Got a little bit of oozing glue there. I'm just gonna wipe it off my bone folder. All right, this is simply reinforcement so that when I'm sewing my signatures into this, they stay in place really well. Missed a corner here. All right. Phew, that was a bit of work, wasn't it? All right, let's cover up this glue. Whoops. I was using that pin, that needle. Let's get the silicone top for this thing. And I do store it this way in my little box here. This is gonna become what I'm going to sew my signatures in. And I have to sew them in so that this part is to the back because when I, I'm gonna sew the signatures into this and then this is gonna get glued down to this. And this little, <sighs> secret of panel back there, it can be ugly because it's not going to be seen, number one. And number two, it's really to just strengthen the fabric for accepting my signatures. So now if I do three signatures, let me see, I feel something wet here. It's probably just a little acetate that got loose on us. That means I have to separate these two signatures. We're going to give that a little time to dry and figure out. we got to turn this two into three. Whoop, whoop, Cena, right? Like everybody, just give me a little shout out. Now, can you imagine this is the original bottle and I bet this stuff is really thick. Uh, yeah, it's not like, I could probably put it like that for 15 minutes. <laughs> it's just so thick. <sighs> I think the next time I buy a bottle of this stuff, this is an eight ounce bottle, I'll buy a smaller bottle. Just cause you know, as time goes on, glue just dries out on you. So you're just gonna keep dealing with having to wet it down and get it reconstituted. I've never had that trouble with this glue, but I wanted to use the Fabrifix on that, that particular piece. Okay, let's get this down from two to three. I'm gonna keep these two as my two covers for two of them, but let me find another piece that would make sense as a cover for the third. Like there is another one that's another page that could be a cover. If I flip it this way, this is upside down. This is right side up, but then that's upside down. I'm going to keep it like this. It's upside down. Big deal. <laughs> these will be my three covers. Okay. Now I have to separate these pages so that I have an equal number of pages in the three. We'll just do this. I'm going to take them apart a little bit. One, two, three signatures. And now I want equal numbers of pages in each. Now I kind of like the way I had these set up. So I'm going to do one. Let me just count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh my gosh. Twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, oh my gosh, there's a lot of pages in here. 16 times two is 32. Well, if I do 30 divided by three signatures would be 10 sheets per signature and just take out two. That way they're all evenly distributed. So let's just start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine. Oh, I want these two together. 
I need a 10, but I want those two together. And I don't want that to be the center. Okay, hold on. Maybe we'll keep these together. Up two. I need one more sheet for that other. Let's do this one. That should be 10. Now, second signature needs 10 sheets. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that would be five. So I need five more sheets from here into here, and we should be just about even. Oh, I like the envelope, but I got to get rid of two things. So maybe that one will come out. Let's get rid of those two. My fan's not helping me. Six. Seven, we're going to go opposite. Eight. Nine. Ten. Does it seem confusing? I'm just separating out to try to get ten. Well, it'll be eleven with the covers. Sheets in each of these bindings or uh, signatures so that they're even. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. They must not have been even from the beginning. This would make ten. Let's just see if they're if they look pretty even. How does it look to you? When you want them to be pretty equal, I actually still feel like this is a lot. That's a lot of bulk in here. Let's, this is a fairly thick paper. I'm going to take that out, and it was longer, so I was going to have to cut it down anyway. I'm going to take that out. That helps immensely. Let's take those two sheets out of these two signatures because it just feels too thick with them. That feels better. Something is still too long, and it's that music paper. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tear with my tear ruler. I'm going to tear a little bit of this paper off. I need to tear like right there. I think I can do it right here. We'll see. Good. I won't lose my title to my page. It's just sticking out a little too far. Now I got to find the other side of that just right here and tear an equal amount off. doesn't have to be exact. I'm just, you know, if you could use this as your guide, but it doesn't have to be uber precise. If you live in my world, uber precise is not necessary, which is so, so freeing. It's just full of freedom. Okay. Now, how are we looking? That's much better. There are three more manageable. Let's see. That's still drying. What is this going to look like in here? Oh, really nice. See how it fits this way, too? I got a piece of burlap sticking out. My That'll fit so beautifully. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do these three signatures. But I'm going to sew them onto here and then glue them into the book. So the next part is sewing this into here. Okay, so... What time is it? Oh gosh, we've been live for about an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> Sandy says, this is fun. Yay, I'm so glad you like it. You're loving it? Yay, Sina, I appreciate that. Hey, if you have a group that you belong to of friends or a group of other creatives that allow shared videos, I would love the help with just getting the word out, the kinds of things I do over here. Okay. We are going to sew into this. I'm going to work on this side for a minute just to give myself, I'm gonna fold this in half so I know what my halfway point is. Okay. And that, that creased line shows me my halfway point. And I could have, there's three, three signatures, I could have one right on that line and then we have an inch to work with. So a third of an inch away in either direction, I should still be within that inch, right? So if I take a ruler and 
I could draw a pencil line here or a chalk line on this middle fold. I mean, a finger press shows it to you visually, but if you need the help, like this is just a chalk pencil, I could come in and do that because now I can, like we can literally see that white line, right? <laughs> then using my invisible ruler, my idea is a third of an inch each way should get me all three signatures in here equally distant from each other. Um, this ruler, it's kind of see that it's kind of harder to see the third of an inch. Oh, I just lost my my tack that was holding that into the place. Okay, if I do, what I want to do is find a third of an inch here. It has different measurements on each side of the ruler. So here's one inch, a third of an inch is, is that's a quarter inch, so that's a third. I'm just studying my lines here. Oh, here's where my crooked, <laughs> my crookedness doesn't come into play. I'm going to place that third of an inch line, which is right there on my white line. Oh, I gotta find it on the bottom too. If this is a quarter, this is a third. Is that correct, Grace? No, it looks way off. Why am I way off that? There's my third line. That's my third line, no? Let's try it. This is erasable. So this line shouldn't be seen. I want to, but oh, now you can see it really well. I want to get, see that looks a little off to me. Something, something, something looks a little off there. See how it's, it's, it's closer here than it is there. I think my line, what I was lining up on the, on the, um, on the see-through ruler was too, was too far on the one side. Let's erase the chalk. And try this again. Trying to get from this first line a third of an inch out. And it so the problem is it gives big markers on the ruler for a quarter inch, half inch, one inch. It doesn't give a big marker, like it doesn't give a long line for the third inch. So you really have to rely on your eyes, which if you got the old eyes like I do, it's a little hard to do. That would be a half inch which I suppose that could be okay. I'm on the wrong line altogether. That would be a half inch, Grace, right there. But I don't want a half an inch. I want the next line over, which is right there, should be. I told you I'm not super precise, but in this instance, if, if you don't get these lines right and you try to sew in three signatures and it, they'll be really wonky, it'll mess up your whole book. <laughs> it will mess up your whole book. So you want to try to be as precise as possible. It helps me in this instance to go at the half inch mark and then move it one notch over on both sides to try to line up the third inch. And I really need to sharpen this pencil, but we're going to just go with it. It's like basically a chalk. It's a powder, so it will erase eventually. I'll get, I'll be able to get rid of that line. It's not permanent. Okay, now can you see them? So I have three. This one's really faint. That's where my half fold is. Oh, yeah, it is. And then a third of an inch away and a third of an inch away, if I sew my signatures in there, where is that going to be in my book cover? You want it to be equally distant and centered. I put the board, well, I'm trying to line up that line. This is where the board is. I just want to make sure I, I'm mindful of that so I'm really at the center here. So if I'm putting this here, do you see how they'll be centered in here? Hopefully. Heek! Okay. 
Next up is to create our holes, both in our, on our binding, our floating binding and in our signatures. And because there are so many moving parts here, I think I would be most comfortable doing it on paper. Um, if I don't do it on paper, I think I'll really struggle. I, I need to make myself a paper template. Otherwise, I'm going to really struggle to get this all lined up, is what I think. Hey, crafty friend. It's Brenda from Totally Together Creating with Brenda. Hello, darling. Janet says, so much great learning. Yay. All right. Whew. I'm really eager. I know we've been on for a while, but I'm really eager to keep working on this. I'm like really motivated to get this going. Okay, I have this like old receipt from Chocotour that's a regular eight and a half by 11. So if I do this, I can cut off a half an inch of this paper and then use a strip of it to make my eight inch template. So let's do that. I'm going to cut off a half inch. No, we're going to cut a half inch the other way, Gracie. Duh, I need it to be this direction. Again, it's too big for my board, so I'm going to do this. We make things work. We just make it happen. We're not just going to get too worked up over things. Uh, I'm in a bad spot right there because I can't see what I'm doing with that logo. Oh, and I don't want to cut my, <laughs> I don't want to cut my washi tape. Kimberly's going to go make dinner. What are you making, Kimberly? What's for supper today? All right, that should be eight inches now. Yes, which is the size of my strip of paper. So now if I cut myself, a two inches should be enough to work with as a template. I end up getting a pile of stuff next to me, you know, that I, I just keep saying to myself, I'll put it away later, I'll put it away later, so that you don't have to wait for me to put stuff away. Okay, see, it's the same size? That's what we're after. And I'm gonna use this as my template. So we're going to, I always start by folding it in half so I know where my halfway point is. And then I need to get, again, to the three quarter and the three quarter mark from there. So this will be easier to do. Um, uh, yeah, three, did I say th a third of an inch, a third. I just measure something just for, yeah. It's actually not a third, it's a little bigger. <laughs> it's three eighths of an inch. Okay, Gracie. You did it to yourself. Three eighths of an inch on both sides. I hate fractions more than anything. Where do I put my ruler? I really do, girls. I can't be alone in this, am I? It might be much easier if I just don't even look at the other side. I've got my one line there and I need to th be three eighths of an inch. Right there would be three eighths of an inch. And this I can mark up all I want. It's just a template. Do the same thing on the other side. Flip it. Put it down on a straight line. Put my invisible ruler or see-through ruler over it. And it doesn't matter if I'm on a straight line or not. I just need to make sure I'm at three-eighths of an inch on both sides. One, two, where's my three? Right there. Am I crooked? I can't see. Lord, Lord, it looks crooked to me. Gracie grew. Look, one, two, three. It's different measurements. That's what I'm struggling with. That's this line right here. The little line next to the big line. It's the little one, Grace. That's right there. 
Good gravy. Oh, blew away with the wind. Okay, that's good. <laughs> this one's off. It's definitely off. I can see it. Crazy. Get it together, girl. I can see it's off with my blind eye. Even for somebody who usually wings it, like I'm just going to wing it, I'm not a measurer, I can see that I'm off. Way off. Can I just say something real quick? Because you're, I'm doing it and it's painful for me. You're watching it. But, but, the, but the mere fact that you're not actively involved, like you're not actively doing this, unless you got your, you know, hands busy, you know, petting the dog, you know, scratching the dog's ears or doing something, you're probably bored out of your mind watching me try to get this right. And I apologize for that, but it, it is what it is, girls. I really, we got to get this down right so that when we, see how, see where I am with this? It would be easier if I did this, really. Um, if it's not straight, we're going to have a really crooked book, and I don't want a really crooked book. Let's line up our lines here, and I'm going to give myself presumably if I line up those two lines. It's the ruler. I can't see through the ruler all the lines, and it could be the ruler with all the funky lines and my eyes. I need a ruler that has more clear third inch markers than this one has. There we go. Whew. I'm so sorry for how exhausted that was. Okay, now that I have that, it's just mimicking what's here. Now I can make a template for myself. How many stitch holes are we going to do? You know what would be really fun that I've never done is sewing it with my machine right through there. So there's my middle. If I'm going to do three holes, if I'm going to do a three hole stitch, I'm going to fold this twice and that's going to tell me that I need to make holes on my paper and on my fabric here, here, and here. And that would make my holes really straight. Well, my some of my little markers are bigger than others, but you get the drift. <laughs> Me too. Maureen, I'm with you, girl. I am so cool with you. Hi, Estella. Thank you for saying so. So a template can always be helpful, especially if you're using, if you have to have many things with the same exact holes. Right? So we have four things that have to have these same exact holes. This piece of fabric slash paper. And then these three signatures all need to have holes that line up. So it's much easier to do it with a template than it is to try to just line all this stuff up and make the holes at the same time. So what you could do is like glue or tape this down and then make your holes. But I usually just use my awl and poke the holes through where I need them. Um, I'm very, very tempted to tr attempt. Where's my sits? The middle of this. I've never done it before to run a whole book through my sewing machine <laughs> and, and sew it right on that line. I've never done it before. Has anybody ever done that before? I've seen it done. I just have not been the one to do it. It would take me attaching these two and then running a stitch in my sewing machine right down the middle. Or we don't do that at all. This is a little shorter than my papers are. My papers are a little bit bigger than 
my template, but that's okay because I can visually center that. And then make my holes with that. Hi, Estella. How are you, my dear? It's interesting what this whole process is. Um, we kind of live in a world of like short videos that are sped up, but you know, those videos don't always help us know what the heck we're supposed to do with all of this. Um, they don't, they're not always exactly helpful. Uh, the sped up videos you need you need to see it in slow time you need to have the talk through as to why I make one decision over another in in the process of making these things to fully grasp and understand how to put it together all right I have my holes established in this signature I'm going to use a binding a couple of clips to hold these together so I don't lose track. I can always make these holes bigger to sew through later, but that one's done. I'm gonna see this. these are shorter than everything else, so I wanna make sure that they're centered so that when I put my holes through, I make sure that all three holes are gonna hit these shorter pages. That's pretty important. And is that the way I want to do this? Yeah, that would be okay. The other option would be to have this be in the center. That could be really fun. I think I'll just do it like this, like we originally had it. Now, same thing. I'm gonna stick this in the middle and make sure it's equally distant. And I could check with this one and make sure I'm like at the same place in the middle, which I am. Otherwise, one signature is gonna sit higher than another one in the book, which is not the end of the world, but it's not ideal either. Whoa, did I lose my spot? I've considered buying, we are memory makers, we are memory keepers, we are memory makers, what is it? <laughs> Which is the, what's the name of that company? I have a bunch of their stuff, you know, of course. Um, but for some reason, we are memory keepers. They have a book binding board that has all of these holes. It's like a template with all these holes for you. I do it the old-fashioned way and make my own templates rather than buying the board. Partially because I'm frugal. Partially because I think I'm I'm better off for it. Like I think I understand the whole process and I'm better at it than, because I am going through the, the difficult work of doing it the old-fashioned way. Okay, I want this to be centered. This, oh, it's just gonna get hit. Those three holes are just gonna hit. See, my wide doily, hmm which may make that, it may, if, it, if I don't get it right, it may make it a little flimsy in the end. So we'll see how that works out. I like to experiment, so we're gonna try it. Where's the center of my book though? It's not the doily. Oh, we have more of this in the center. What's up with that? I didn't realize that was there. And it doesn't even have to be exactly centered. You just want to make sure that three holes hit. <laughs> to, to, to make sure that each piece stays in the book well. Now I just want to check again. I'm going to take one of these other signatures and make sure that my holes here. Yep, I lined up with the holes on the other one. Boy, I have two pieces of burlap in here. Oh, good. I wasn't say. I hope it's not hard to get through this. It wasn't. I 
feel like this one's gotten very wiggly. Stop wiggling on me. All right, we've got all three done. Oh, these, the burlap is really hard to see the holes through. Make them a little bigger. I ran out of clips. I have to sacrifice one clip. That one has two clips in it. Ah, and the clip's not big enough to get to my burlap. It's okay. That's what it's going to end up being. All right, all the holes are in here. Now we got to get our holes in here. And I want to match it up. My center on center. I'm looking for that chalk line. And we're going to open this up. And actually, it could help you a lot. <laughs> May help you a lot to just... Once you get the alignment right, just get yourself a piece of tape. Tape that down so while you're doing it, you're not losing alignment. I thought it came off a little right here. And it did. There. Now I can flip this around and not worry. I just got to get through all of the layers. Okay, so the next part, after we get all these holes established, is to sew everything together. And I think I'll do just a short video and play that as a reel because you've probably seen me do this uh, sewing of the bindings a million times <laughs> by now if you've been hanging out with me a lot. If you're in the craft therapy club, we do this stuff quite a bit with very detailed instruction as well. Okay, now that I have it confidently through the top layer, I can come in here and work through that Tyvek piece a little more confidently up in the air because I don't even really need that. As long as I have the top part of the hole that I can get the all through, then I can make that hole a little bigger. Right, right here, right? Need it to be wide enough to get my string through, whatever string I'm using, and wide enough to get, if you're using a needle, the needle through. I like them to be tight. I don't want really big holes because then everything flops around in your book. I like them to be rather tight holes, small holes rather than really big ones. But whoops, oops, I almost reestablished a new hole there. There. Really see it on this side. That's easier to see. Now that should match up with all the holes that are on these. And now I just have to sew them in place. Let's figure out which one's gonna go first. I'll probably do one of Twisted Paper Design Studio Designs, the lace paper I bought on Etsy and then Twisted Paper Studio again. Again, you guys, the Twisted Paper Studio offered a discount to all of our followers from the Junk Journal Jamboree. If you guys want, um, to pick up this kit that I used, you could certainly go to her Etsy shop and use the discount code that I gave you in the description of the video. Yeah, Crooked Books. Ah, it's not the end of the world. Hi, Janet. How are you? Memory Makers. Thank you, Miss Pam, for helping me out. I couldn't think of it. I think it's because I had creative memories here. It was like throwing my mind off. She says she has the Memory Makers template and it is a lever to help you hold it. However, I'm learning a lot from you about placement of the signatures. Well, good. I'm glad you're learning. We can learn together. All right. It's been over. It's been an hour and 40 minutes. I almost never do a live this long, um, but we got through quite a bit of work on this book. I, it'll all go back in my bin until I'm ready to work on it again. And I'll probably record a little video on, on sewing these um, just to show this next part of it. It's something that you see all the time. There's no difference with this than any other sewn binding that I've done. Um, so we'll, we'll cut it off there and then we'll be able to put the whole book together in the next session. You guys have a beautiful blessed day. Thanks for being here. Please hit the like button, follow the page. I would appreciate the support. Catch you later.